All right, hello everyone, and welcome to my Army Men Sardis Heroes 2 submission for Summer Games Done Quick 2018. So we're going to go right ahead and start. Uh, the timer will start in 3, 2, 1 now. All right, so Army Men Sardis Heroes 2. Um, <laughs> not the greatest uh, sequel to Army Men Sardis Heroes 1. Uh, there's a lot of different things about it, and it's, it's just really, really not... I don't think it's nearly as good as the first one. There are 17 levels in this entire game, and uh, each of the levels has their own little storyline to it, but you know I don't really care about that. Uh, but the biggest thing in this game is the controls in the game. The controls are extremely clunky. Um, it's brutal. It's If you were to play a shooter game like GoldenEye or Perfect Dark, and then come to this game, you will struggle very, very hard. Uh, but I think that's what uh, uh, I like about the game here is it gives it a little bit of a more challenge to, to run. Uh, but the controls are a little bit wonky. So we do have one control. Uh, it is our C up button that basically allows us to do an instantaneous 180 just like that. Um, if Sometimes if you're stuck, um, the quickest way is just to do the 180. Because it will take forever to turn around just manually through the joystick. Uh, so we're going to kill a couple of these guys here. The first couple of levels here of this game are pretty basic. Uh, you essentially just want to kill the guys in the first couple of levels. And then get to the end of the level, which is the portal here. And the auto-aim is not working the way it should be. And that's another thing about the game, is the auto-aim is not that great. So you kind of have to shoot a lot of times here for it to finally register. So... Yeah, really bad controls, and uh, we have a 180 mechanic that allows you to instantaneously uh, do a 180. Uh, a couple other mechanics that you'll see in this game, this is an unintentional mechanic. Uh, it's called a late jump. So basically what a late jump is, it allows you to jump off a platform, even though you're still not on the platform. So you have like a little bit of time. Uh, just went to skip here. So that was just our first minor skip. It saves about 15 to 10 seconds. So basically a late jump allows you to jump off the platform and the game still thinks that you're on the platform even after a few frames after you're off the platform. So it allows you to jump just a little bit further than you normally would and it allows you to get into places where we're not supposed to be and we're experiencing a lot of lag in this level. Um, it's, the lag is coming from that tank that's just below there and we'll see the, the lag here a lot once we're trying to jump up here. Yeah, it's lagging a lot. When the game lags, um, some of your inputs don't register and that can get a little bit frustrating at, at times but again it's just one of those controls and mechanics that make the game a little bit more difficult than it should so yeah late jump is allows you to jump off platforms a few frames after even if you're not on the platform and um, allows you to jump to, to further places so this level here is freezer we are in a freezer and you'll see the first time first time we'll see these soda cans so the lore in the story or in the game is these soda cans have this serum that a lot like apparently like you know harden up your army plastic or whatever like that and basically makes you completely frozen and kills the people and there's obviously a villain named Plastro who wants to plaster everybody that's his kind of his goal in the game here so the lore in the story is that we have to stop Plastro from plastering everybody and it has all of that in those soda cans. So we'll see a couple of those soda cans throughout the game. Um, a couple other mechanics that you might want to know is uh, when you are shooting your gun, uh, if you are hit by another bullet, you will kind of stop and do like a, a hit animation and you'll actually lose time um, every time you're hit by a bullet. So it's very important that we start dodging bullets, especially when we're running or whatever like that. Because it can be a pain in the butt to do. So so on this level here, inside wall, we're going to see another minor skip. We saw another one, or we saw our first one in fridge. Um, so we want to get up here. And this will be the first level that we're playing as Vicky. Uh, the last person that you saw playing is Sarge. They are completely identical. Um, they are absolutely no different than each other other than looks. Um, it's funny because uh, the creators of this game, 3DO, you could tell they, I think, copy and pasted the, the mechanics of the character that you play. Because if you fall from a, from a distance with Vicky here, um, you'll hear the grunt sound from Sarge. So 
There's a couple. There's a neat little thing that they forgot here. So here's a minor skip here. It saves about 10 seconds in total. I'm going to jump from corner to corner. And we got it, which is good. Uh, it sometimes can be a little tricky. And we fell. That's too bad. Uh, again, these pipes are these pipes are really, really flimsy. They're, you, you get even close to the edge and you'll just start sliding off. Combined with the back controls and you know late jumps that we have to do right here. Um, actually, that was fine. We didn't have to do our climbing animation, which is good. Um, it can make for a very tricky jump sometimes, even though it seems a little easy. So we'll jump onto this power box here and that will be the end of the inside wall level. So this next yard or next um, level is called graveyard. It's an extremely basic level. All we have to do is grab a key that opens up a gate and then we're basically done. There's one part of the level which we'll get to here. Uh, you have to run across a minefield. There's a little bit of RNG but you can often go through one single path and it's fairly consistent. You just have to run straight towards that yellow guy and jump right there. Now, in this level here, you do have a couple allies, uh, or one ally. And if he dies, then the mission's over. So we'll see a few of these levels where we'll have our allies with us. And if at any point they die, the mission's done. We have to restart. So that's kind of the bad thing about this game is that there are parts where you can't control and it is RNG based, but it's generally pretty good. So we grabbed our key, opened up the gate, and we'll head out to the end of the level here. So, um, yeah. These zombies here, they, they'll go for you, but they're pretty easy to dodge. And uh, those trees that we just passed have extremely terrible hitboxes, so we have to go on off to the sides. So This next level, Castle, uh, again, it's fairly basic. We have to grab three keys this time rather than the one in Graveyard. Um, there are a couple trigger points that we have to get to first and then backtrack a little bit. So we'll go to this gate here, backtrack, and then we'll have to, one of these guys will drop a key that will allow us to open up the gate. Uh, we will see Vicky later on in the level. Again, if she dies, then we have to restart the level, which kind of sucks because she's at near the end of the level. So if she dies, then you kind of have to restart the entire level. And what we're going to do is we're going to strafe up, strafe up these uh, slopes here. It's a little bit faster than walking up street. So we're just going to walk until we can't um, go any further because we'll be uh, locked down by a gate in which we'll need to grab another key. And it will be dropped by these guys here. And we'll open the gate here. And now we come and save Vicky because she was captured at one point or she was helping alongside or something. Again, if she dies, then we have to restart the level. So we have to really make sure that we don't um, let her die. Now... The allies on your team can be a little bit right, stupid, <laughs> it's uh, one way of putting it. Sometimes they get stuck just running on the ground, so you have to shoot them in order to get them going again. So it's kind of scary because if you shoot them then they have a chance of dying and you having to restart the level. So, so we have a lot of allies on this level, there's a lot that can go wrong, uh, but generally if you are pretty quick and catch the cycles here, you should be good. And we just missed the rocket launcher guy, so that's good. We didn't get hit by them. You generally want to be ahead of your allies at all times, um, in case there is um, a rocket launcher that comes, or if any of these guys decide to... There's another rocket launcher here. So generally, I we, we want to go first so that everyone focuses you and not your allies. Because you can do a lot more... You can take a lot more hits than your allies. So we'll grab the health pack and click out this wave here. And there's Plasho in the back. He's going to be running here. See him running off the background. We're going to let him run a little bit because if you kill him for whatever, in this, uh, for whatever reason in this level, you'll fail a mission. Because you don't want to kill him for some reason. You just want to capture him. Um, and the reason why you want to let him run a little bit is because uh, 
There's a couple guys we have to kill, and you don't want to be auto aiming on Plastro. We're getting low on health. We're gonna grab this health pack here. We're gonna let him run here. We're gonna see a guy with a flamethrower, and he might kill us, even though we beat the level. And we're good, actually, so that's good. And that is the tan base level. So this is the level called Revenge. Um, we're going to be seeing our first, I guess you could say, auto-scroller level. Um, there is a part where we have to wait 60 seconds in order to move on. Uh, it's just right here once we kill this guy here. So our ally is going to take 60 seconds to open up the door. So while he's opening up the door, we have to defend him. So this would be a good time for donations uh, at this point of the level. So we're going to go ahead and grab a weapon boost that will speed up the rate of fire on your weapons. It's this blue thing here. We're going to wait for a timer so that we can time it and go through the door at the same time. And we're going to kill the uh, this big red yellow robot. These are the called these are called super robots. And uh, we saw a couple already in the, in the past. We saw some in the freezer level. Uh, they're kind of a pain in the butt to kill, but if you have a flamethrower or a rocket launcher, then they're fairly easy to get down. These black ones are called uh, shock troopers, I think they are. And they're very glitchy, because they'll do exactly that. They'll run through walls, they'll go through anything. They're really, really glitchy. And kind of sucks, because it can ruin a run. Because sometimes they'll walk through a wall, and you can't kill them anymore. So we'll kill another super robot here. I think my rocket went right through his head. <laughs> and this level here, it has a weird RNG. So there's another super robot back in their distance there. Sometimes he spawns, sometimes he doesn't. I don't really know the reason why. But it does lose us time if he does spawn. It requires us to kill him and other guys as well. So there's a lot of shock troopers here. And it's a good thing that the flamethrower does a little bit of AoE. Um... There's, there seem to be a lot more shock troopers than, than normal. And there's one between each of these buildings here. So the next level is called um, Desk, I believe. And we are going to see our first major skip. So essentially, what I'm going to be doing when I start the level is I'm going to be grabbing a shield. And then I'm going to be jumping off the middle of the level. Normally, if you jump off the middle of the level, you will instantly die before you even hit the ground. So right in front of me. If you were to jump off, you would instantly die before you hit the ground. Um, what it's going to do... Actually, I'm going to do the jump right here. You'll see my health go down as soon as we grab the ledge. And we missed it. So, it will take down 100% of your health as soon as you jump off in midair, right in front of me. And then, since you have the shield, you won't immediately die. But since you're hitting the ground as well, it'll do like another 75% of your health, maybe 50%. And we died there as well. And um, it will kill you. But we're, what we're trying to do is we're trying to grab onto the ledge uh, on a wall that's below us there. So the wall is up higher and therefore we don't have to take as much falling damage, which allows us to... Oh my goodness, that's not very good. It allows us to, um, to not die. And we can actually skip like 85-90% of the level. We took some damage there, which is not ideal. There we go. So now we have all of our health is gone, but we have a shield, which is not how the game should be. Or not how the game should be doing that. So now we have our health there now that we hit, uh, picked up the health pack. It's kind of a weird, like, I don't know, it's weird, I don't think it's supposed to be like that. So that took us a few tries, which is a little bit unfortunate, uh, but that's just, that's just how it is sometimes. 
So this level bed, we have our another minor skip here. We'll jump off here. We'll late jump onto that ledge there. It saves us maybe 15 seconds or so. Uh, two rocket launcher guys here, so we have to be sure not to get hit. Because that can be a real pain in the butt. And here's a, a good example of trying to or dodging the bullets because we want to continuously shoot the uh, helicopter or the attack helicopter, but every time it hits us, it stops us from shooting, so it slows us down a lot if we get hit. So that's why you kind of have to strafe back and forth. So this is another example of why you or sometimes you have to shoot your own teammates because they get stuck. Um, he might be okay. I, I did see him run before, but we're going to shoot him anyway. And hopefully that will trigger him so that he can start running again. Alright, that was a good clear. So again, this level we have a lot of allies. If any of them die, then we have to restart. So we just have to be, be sure to, to kind of go first and take all the damage and not let our teammates die. We're going to see more of those super robots. So we're going to be collecting um, a bunch of rocket launcher ammo just because it does take only like a couple hits to kill them. And this is also the first level that we'll see our blue allies come with us as well. So we don't want any of the blue guys to die either. Another rocket launcher. And we're going to grab the red boost, which is uh, we increased weapon damage. And what we're going to do is we're going to run past this guy here. And since we have our rocket launcher that we collected, we're going to use that on the super robots and kill them even faster since we have the weapon boost. And then we'll just finish off the other uh, yellow guys here. They can kind of spawn in weird places. So we just have to make sure that we don't die or kill any of our teammates by accident. There we go. <laughs> so that was actually a really good uh, clear. So Cash here is a, uh, a level that features our another major skip. Imagine this level being shaped as a horseshoe. So it's kind of like a shaped as in a, in a U. And we're going to be s jumping from one end of the horse horseshoe to the other, which is right across from us. And it needs to be a late jump, or you will miss the jump. And there's a guy, a sniper, just hiding behind here. And we got him here. So thankfully, this is right at the start of the level. In case we do miss it, we can restart, and it'll only lose us a few seconds. Well, 20. And there we go. So you, you saw that uh, Sarge, he kind of dropped down a little bit, but the game still thought that he was on a ledge. So it allows us to, to uh, jump late, I guess. So we'll kill these guys here. They do have rocket launchers, so we have to be really careful. And we're good. Now, since we are doing this level in a strange way, you're supposed to be going around the horseshoe and then coming back. But since we skipped the one half of it, we have to be really careful not to track backwards now. So we're basically doing um, the jobs in this level, or the orders that are required. We're basically doing them in reverse. If you do them out of order, it will soft lock the level, and we have to restart the level. So we have to be really sure that once we go forward, we don't go back. And uh, we're going to take down this uh, attack helicopter here. Why isn't it... Uh... There we go. Here. We're gonna grab a bunch of weapons here. It's safe to go back just a little bit here. And we're killing another shock trooper. And they're again they're very glitchy. They're terribly programmed. And they're kinda scary because they can, you know, 
come up randomly and kill you. Um, I shouldn't be okay. That should be okay. I'm gonna grab a uh, weapon, uh, rate of fire boost. That airplane or helicopter, and get this one as well. and we're good so this next level is called train um, it is our second auto scroller level I guess you could say so basically there are five trains that are spawning and each of them spawn at a certain interval of time so it doesn't matter if you do something first or something like a little bit quicker they're always going to spawn at a certain time so we basically have to wait until these trains spawn now these trains require, you have to destroy these trains with rocket launcher ammo. They require two uh, rockets to be destroyed. So between each of the trains that spawn, we're going to be grabbing more rocket launcher ammo. And uh, allowing us to uh, finish all the trains there. So we have four rocket launcher ammo, so we're good for the next two trains. We killed one. So now we can just wait until they spawn, and this is kind of why you call it an auto scroller. You can just you just wait. You don't have to really do anything. So this would be a good time for donations as well. Alright, so after we destroy this train here, we're going to run to the other side of the level and grab some more rocket ammo. And we have to be sure that uh, Vicky doesn't die because she'll be... Now that we're coming through this little um, part of the level, she's going to start running behind us and we got to make sure that we kill all the enemies here and make sure that she does not die. There's a couple rocket launcher guys here. And there's some more rocket ammo. So unfortunately the ammo that you pick up is three rockets and not four. So since we need two rockets to uh, destroy the train, we're going to have to go to the other side of the level again and grab another piece of uh, ammunition. See, Vicky's stuck there, which is probably not good. So we're going to shoot her. I hate doing this because you could easily just fail the level doing that. So we just have to make sure that all the other enemies are destroyed here. So the, sh the trains, what they do is that they spawn, and they'll like spawn in different parts of the level if you don't destroy it in the other part. So we're going to let the train go through the first section, and then we'll destroy it in, in the second section, which I'll show you here in a minute. Did we pick up that rocket ammo? Okay, we did. That's Vicky. No, that's not Vicky. That's a miniature guy. So we heard the train horn there, that means it's coming through the first section there. Uh, once we hear the train horn again, that means it's coming through the second section. And there's going to be guys that are sniping Vicky, so we're going to go ahead and snipe them instead. We're good there. Uh, we're running out of time a little bit. Okay, should be good. And we should be able to get the train on the second section here. There we go. So sometimes the rocket ammo doesn't like it, or the train doesn't like it when you shoot it from very far away. So we're going to wait for it to come over here. That should be good.
All right, so this next level is called Rockets. This is a an interesting level to say the least. So you have to destroy five rockets that are in five different silos. Normally you would have to bust into the silos first and then destroy them. But what we're going to do is we're going to throw some grenades over the walls and just destroy them that way. So we're going to destroy silo one, which we just got. We're going to destroy silo number two, which should be good. You'll know um, that we got them when the timer is uh, when it disappears. So right now it says that we need to go after silo number three, um, but we're actually going to go after silo number five uh, before that, which is just right in front of us there. You can see that, the little blue rocket there. So we're going to toss a grenade over there. And that should be good. Yep, we got that one. There's a guy with a rocket launcher here. We're going to make sure that we proc him so we... Oh no, we killed him first. Okay, so that's good. And then we're going to destroy um, silo th or rocket number three. Or is it number four? No, I think it's number three. Throw this ball here. Chuck a grenade over here so the army of guys die right away. A lot faster to do that that way. And the other uh, rocket, rocket number three, is just above this wall. So we're going to make sure not to... Alright, that worked really well. We're doing really good so far in rockets. So, since we uh, destroyed rocket five, uh, rocket four will be our last one. The game is smart enough to realize that you did destroy uh, rockets out of order. So thank goodness for that. And luckily for this rocket here, it's so close to the door here. Normally you have to destroy all these doors to get into the silos. But luckily the uh, rocket is close enough to the door so that if you blow up the door, it'll also blow up this, the rocket. So that was a really good rocket. That might have been the best rocket I've ever done. Pool table. Pool table is a run killer. It can be a run killer. It's our second last level. Pool table has a five minute skip. Um, it has, it's the most, it's the, it's another major skip. And what we want to do is we want to jump off this Tesla coil. We want to late jump off it. And then while we're in mid air, you want to 180 so that you can grab the roof or the ledge of the roof here. Because above this roof is the end of the level. So I'm going to need a little bit of concentration here. Because if you jump too early, then you uh, hit the roof and you fall back down. It's a very tough trick. It's the hardest trick, I think, of uh, in the entire game, in it, but it saves the most time. It's a tough, it's a very tough trick. And it can, like I said, it is the it is the run killer. It is the the trick that causes the most runs to to die out. Nope. You have such a little time window to jump. But once you jump, all you have to do is 180 to grab the ledge of the roof. Normally, casually, this level will take about six or six or seven minutes to beat. So, doing this, you can spend a few minutes on it and still, I mean, save some a few minutes in the level. Uh, we're not having some good luck here. We're doing not doing so hot. This is, uh, we're not doing good here. We're definitely not doing good. Oh, that was almost it. Uh, 
That was too early. There we go. We got it finally. <laughs> so typically, uh, ver if you compare that trick in a speed run and uh, that level in a casual one, again, it saves about five or so minutes. So definitely worth doing. Very hard to to get down the first try. So this is the last level here. We want to save five of our allies. Again, if any of them die, we have to restart the level. And uh, we are on a cycle here, and I did lose a little bit of time there. So hopefully that doesn't kill our allies. Because basically, for each ally you save, there's enemies that are like trying to uh, shoot and kill them. So if you're slow on one of them, you kind of are slow on the other ones as well. So you have to be sure to be quick enough so that your allies don't die uh, ahead of time there. So again, these, these guys are walking over to one of, the, one of my guys here, and we're good there. Save him. And then the fourth guy's over here. Or was that our fifth guy? Yeah, I think that was the fifth guy already. So, so now we just have to kill the rest of the enemies. Uh, we'll see Plastro again, but unfortunately, we don't get to kill him. We just get to capture him. So there he is there. Kill that guy there, and the time will end right after we kill this guy. It ends right... So that is Army Men Sergeant's Heroes 2 and 32 minutes. Uh, the estimate for this time I'll put for 45 minutes, 50 minutes. And uh, the nice thing about this game here is on our speedrun.com page, we have everything documented. So all of our, our skips that we do, all of the mechanics that we use um, are all documented and we, you know, it's, it's, it's really helpful for a new runner to come in and learn the game. So again, the only uh, thing about this game here is that you have to get used to the controls. The controls are quite clunky, so but that was, that's what makes it interesting and challenging as well. So thank you for watching, and uh, I wish uh, everyone else the best of luck.